Welcome to this Asia Global podcast, brought to you by the Asia Global Institute at the University of Hong Kong. I'm your host, Alejandro Reyes, the Institute's Director of Knowledge Dissemination. In our programs here in Hong Kong and online and in the content that we produce, we focus on presenting Asian perspectives on global issues. Our focus in this episode is Japan. The Prime Minister of Japan, Abe Shinzo, recently announced that he will be stepping down due to illness. Abe-san has been Japan's longest serving Prime Minister, a total of about nine years reckoning his two stints in office, which is really no small feat in modern Japan. There has been a lot of written already and discussed in recent days about Abe Shinzo's legacy, mainly focusing on his economic policies, which are often referred to as Abenomics the program to rev up the economy and pull it out of stagnancy in a def deflationary spiral. A key aspect of Abenomics has been for Japan to find new sources of growth, especially given the country's aging demographics and its declining population. Boosting trade, commerce and investment, of course, has been an important part of that. When it comes to economic partnership agreements, free trade agreements and other related initiatives, Japan in recent years has been pretty busy. It has 19 agreements with 21 countries or regions that have been signed or come into effect covering 52.4% of total trade. If you include ongoing negotiations, that figure goes up to 86.1%. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP, might be regarded as Prime Minister Abe's jewel in the crown. Of course, the U.S. withdrew from the TPP when U.S. President Donald Trump took office, but Japan led a group of countries to move the 11 signatories forward to conclude the comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, the CPTPP. Then there is the Japan-EU EPA Economic Partnership Agreement, which came into force on February 1 last year, and there are ongoing negotiations for a Japan-UK FTA and of course, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, which includes all the 10 ASEAN economies, as well as Australia, China, New Zealand, South Korea, and Japan. India had been at the table of the RCEP, but last year announced it would not continue to participate in the talks. Anyways, let's talk trade. So joining me now from Tokyo is Shikata Noriki, who recently became Assistant Minister and Director General of the Economic Affairs Bureau at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Shikata-san has held a number of key positions in the Japanese Civil Service, Deputy Cabinet Secretary for Public Affairs and Director of Global Communications in the Prime Minister's Office, which a service for which he was recognized with the Golden Standard for Political Communications. He was also head of the political section at the Japanese Embassy in London and Deputy Chief of Mission in Beijing. Before taking up his current position this summer, Shikata-san was on a fellowship at the Weatherhead Center for International Affairs at Harvard University. He has a law degree from Kyoto University and a master's in public policy from the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. Shikata-san, welcome. It's wonderful to see you. Very nice seeing you. Yes. Now, the TPP and then the CPTPP must mm -hmm. be the Abe administration's greatest accomplishment really in trade. It was a struggle mm -hmm. to get the TPP and then it required extra effort to regroup, to get the TPP 11, to turn it into the CPTPP. Mm -hmm. And now I recall the drama in Da Nang in Vietnam in 2017, at the end of 2017, when Canada bought at signing the deal, but it was eventually concluded early in 2018 and now has come into force in seven of the countries. And of course, now others are expressing interest, which is uh, in, in some ways a seal of approval for the CPP, TPP. Mm -hmm. The United States has even expressed interest. Um, China has even expressed interest recently. And even the United Kingdom, uh, which is a kind of um, out of the box uh, country for, <laughs> for the region has expressed interest. I'm wondering if you could tell us now about the CPP. What has it meant for Japan and, and for the region at large from, from the Japanese perspective? Uh, well, 
when the Prime Minister Abe uh, expressed uh, his intention uh, for Japan to participate in the ongoing uh, TPP negotiation, uh, Japan wanted to pursue high standards uh, international trade uh, agreements across uh, Asia Pacific. And uh, it was a challenging negotiation from uh, a Japanese uh, perspective as well. But uh, uh, this uh, TPP negotiation uh, was believed uh, to be a kind of engine for growth. Uh, for the, the Asia-Pacific region. So uh, even after <clears throat> the US government uh, expressed uh, its intention to withdraw from uh, TPP, Prime Minister Abe uh, has uh, demonstrated a very strong leadership and proactively led the discussions in concluding uh, the CPTPP, so-called TPP level, which entered into force by the end of uh, 2017. And uh, we keep the door open uh, for the United States uh, to return to the table uh, if uh, uh, the US government uh, determines to, to do so. <clears throat> so as you mentioned, uh, there are uh, countries and regions you know, that are interested in joining uh, this uh, TPP-11, uh, CPTPP, uh, such as the UK and Thailand. And um, uh, basically, uh, this agreement uh, is not limited geographically. So that's why uh, the UK uh, could be a, a member, uh, accession member to uh, CPTPP. And uh, uh, this is a way to raise uh, international trade standards uh, among, uh, based on the negotiation among like-minded countries. Well, indeed, can you tell us a bit more about how this is a game changer? Because, um, you know, Hillary Clinton in the, uh, during the U.S. campaign, election campaign in 2016, called it the gold standard. And of course, she then sort of did a, a flip and, 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 and went uh, uh, against the TPP. Mm -hmm. She had called uh, uh, the agreement the gold standard of trade agreements. Why is it a game changer uh, as far as, you know, from Japan's perspective? Of course, uh, Asia Pacific region, or well, nowadays we call it uh, the Indo Pacific uh, region more yes. often, um, represent uh, basically uh, the, the engine of uh, growth for the global economy. And uh, there, there are numerous you know, supply chains. And uh, uh, in order for uh, companies, multinational companies, to operate across borders. It is uh, desirable to have uh, high standards uh, international trading rules. Uh, when WTO uh, may not be able to agree uh, among WTO members on some of those uh, uh, issues, uh, such as uh, digital uh, provisions, uh, the TPP has included you know, some of the cutting edge provisions which would be beneficial for uh, cross-border uh, trade and investment. And so we believe that, that this will be uh, <clears throat> the driver for economic prosperity uh, for the Asia-Pacific or Indo-Pacific region. Since uh, TPP has gone into effect, in fact, uh, in the seven countries that have so far ratified it and deposited the, uh, the agreement, um, what have been the tangible benefits uh, from Japan's perspective that you've already seen in terms mm -hmm. of um, the results of, 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 of this going into effect? Right. Uh, for example, uh, we have been working on uh, our agricultural policy reform. And as uh, Japanese food is becoming uh, more popular across the world, uh, including in Hong Kong, Yes. Uh, Japanese uh, uh, farmers are finding new opportunities, markets uh, overseas. And so uh, the, the Japanese uh, agricultural industry uh, is becoming more uh, open minded about uh, export opportunities overseas. And uh, this includes, you know, not only Japanese food, 
but Japanese, you know, liquor, whiskey, or sake, among others. Yes. So <clears throat> this is something which uh, we find it as a kind of driver for change and the new economic opportunities. Now, of course, there, as you mentioned, you know, new higher standards uh, in terms of trade, but this includes having chapters on environment, having chapters on cultural issues, having chapters on labor standards. Uh, I'm wondering if you could say a little bit about that, because, of course, th this is really where it gets into um, stuff, if you will, the issues that were not previously dealt with in, in, in other uh, right, right. Uh, similar agreements. Yeah. I guess, you know, some of uh, the provisions you mentioned uh, may be, you know, related to uh, the concept of a so-called, you know, level playing field. Yes. So if uh, uh, one country's uh, uh, wages, you know, uh, wage standards or minimum wages uh, are very low, uh, that could uh, be the basis for uh, competitive uh, disadvantage for importing countries. And so uh, we wish to see uh, raising standards of uh, labor or uh, environmental standards. We, we wish to uh, achieve you know, sustainable development of uh, member uh, economies. So, so uh, that's why we have you know, included you know, some of those chapters uh, that address, you know, so-called, you know, level playing field uh, related yes. matters. Now, the Japan has also concluded an economic partnership agreement with the EU, mm -hmm. which of course is a, a, a major um, a trading power in the world and also a strategic partnership agreement. Mm -hmm. how, how does this then fit in? Because it looks almost like, um, you know, you, 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 you can glue conclude a high level uh, trade agreement with the Asia Pacific uh, region. And then you conclude, so th there's almost a strategic um, um, intent, if you will, to kind of cover uh, a, a large footprint of the trading world. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could put the, the Japan EU agreements in perspective. No, oh, so um, uh, of course, you know, we, we were negotiating uh, TPP earlier uh, and uh, uh, we also, you know, uh, started the negotiation with the EU a bit later than TPP. Um, and, and in terms of the sequence, uh, what happened was uh, uh, TPP or TPP-11 entered into force earlier uh, than uh, Japan-EU uh, EPA. Of course, uh, when you look at the reality of, uh, say, Japanese multinational companies. Uh, most of them have operations in the United States, in Asia, and in Europe. So uh, we, um, Japanese companies attach so much importance to the EU activities, and it makes a lot of sense when, when uh, we succeeded in negotiating uh, uh, the FTA uh, with a huge economic zone covering about 30% of the global, uh, global GDP. Now, I, as I understand it, the Japan-EU agreements cover such important um, issues as energy, transport, there's a lot on people-to-people -people exchanges. Um, is, is there, was there a sense that this was in some ways to offer a kind of parallel to China's Belt and Road Initiative? Is, was, was there some kind of motivation that, or, or inspiration, if you will, that was related to uh, China's own reaching out to Europe through the two Silk Roads? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, Japan-EU uh, EPA negotiation started in 2013, you know, seven years ago. So. Uh, it was before the days of uh, you know, Belt and Road Initiative. We, yeah. we have maintained uh, close uh, relations with the uh, uh, EU. And uh, uh, we think that you know, uh, having a, a trade agreement with the EU itself uh, has uh, uh, major significance. Um, of course, you know, uh, as related to Belt and Road Initiative, 
Prime Minister Abe uh, mentioned uh, so-called, you know, four conditions uh, such as uh, transparency, openness, economic viability, and fiscal sustainability of uh, developing economies. So uh, we have not uh, shut the doors uh, to the possibility of uh, Japan-China uh, collaboration uh, on uh, some of the infrastructure connectivity uh, projects. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so um, of course, uh, from a, a Japanese viewpoint, trading uh, ties with China are uh, very significant. Uh, but at the same time, we need to manage uh, if efficient you know, uh, and effective uh, trading regime with uh, both uh, Asia and uh, European economies. Indeed, if you look at, I, I, as I understand it, if you look at Southeast Asia and the um, amount of Japan invested infrastructure projects, mm -hmm. they actually, um, in terms of value, are far greater than what uh, China uh, has invested mm -hmm. in, through its BRI. So uh, we sometimes, uh, given all the headlines in the news, we don't appreciate that fact that Japan is indeed still uh, the major player in terms of um, infrastructure assistance and development uh, in uh, East Asia, at least. That's right, that's right. So, of course, you know, Japan has been making lots of efforts uh, to support uh, Southeast Asian economic development through its uh, ODA program, uh, technical assistance, uh, yen loans, and uh, Japanese companies' uh, investment. Uh, at the same time, we are mindful of uh, the aspects of uh, uh, kind of open, uh, uh, openness and transparency of our projects. So uh, we don't want to see some of our infrastructure you know, projects to be closed uh, to uh, uh, the outside. Uh, we, we, we attach so much importance to uh, the connectivity uh, to be expanded across borders. So what does this then mean with the, you know, the trade relationship with China? Um, mm -hmm. Because of course, it, it, put the way you have put it, it almost seems to at least, you know, outsiders, casual observers, that there's some kind of competition there mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, getting involved in infrastructure development and also, you know, if you if you think about China as, as now accounting for what twenty percent of Japan's total trade, and then compare that with fifteen percent for each of the U.S. and ASEAN, and twelve percent mm -hmm. for the EU, clearly, of course, China is is the major partner for Japan mm -hmm. at the moment. Now, given the current climate, we've seen the U.S.-China uh, trade friction, the pandemic, and all that that's. Um, uh, the, the impact that that's had on, on, on thinking about global supply chains. And indeed, um, there is a move for Japan to, uh, the, the Japan's financing a shift of some production uh, out of China. Um, where, where are relations then with China in terms mm -hmm. of the trade and economic um, competition, if you will, or mm -hmm. collaboration in some uh, respects? Well, um, I, I was posted in Beijing until uh, last summer. Yes. And uh, I was working on uh, the process of uh, more uh, kind of intensive uh, consultations uh, between the Japanese government and Chinese government uh, on uh, some of the issues, which actually um, happened to uh, be to some extent identical uh, to some of the issues that are raised by the US government or European government, EU uh, governments vis-a-vis uh, -vis China. Uh, there, there are issues uh, such as uh, intellectual property rights issues, uh, the, uh, the subsidy issues, you know, so-called, you know, again, level playing fields, you know, related issues. So uh, uh, we, we have been raising some of those issues uh, and uh, uh, we, as uh, uh, Japan-China relations, you know, started to improve uh, during the last uh, a few years, uh, 
uh, we could manage uh, to engage our Chinese uh, counterpart uh, on those uh, uh, discussions. So we are hoping you know, that the, the Chinese government will introduce further policy of uh, the kind of you know, reform and uh, next gen, uh, stage of uh, reform and opening up. And, uh, uh, and also uh, Chinese government uh, is more attentive to maintaining uh, international trading systems such as the WTO. So we are hoping you know, uh, that uh, by uh, Chinese, uh, uh, by, uh, through promoting uh, further reform uh, in China, uh, this could be conducive to uh, addressing some of the, the frictions between uh, China and the United States and addressing some of, some of the major issues uh, emerging in the context of uh, WTO discussions. But surely with the United States and China in terms of the increasingly sort of difficult relationship that they're having, um, now of course they had a phase one trade deal. Um, what is, how does Tokyo see, see what's happening? Because, because of the strong alliance between the United States and Japan, Surely there's the, the pressure um, would be to, to, to be more on the American side, as it were, uh, on, on, on many of these issues. But has that made the um, relationship with China more difficult? Or has Tokyo been able to, to I guess, stay in the middle in a, in, in a very, and maintain a kind of middle, middle ground? Right. Uh, of course, you know, there are uh, diplomatic issues uh, that have been uh, emerging uh, during the last uh, several uh, months. And uh, uh, we have already expressed uh, our concerns uh, with, regarding uh, Chinese activities uh, to kind of uh, change the status quo in East China Sea, South China Sea, or uh, Hong Kong. Uh, uh, and. Uh, so we are hoping uh, that uh, you know, there, there will be uh, efforts uh, to be made uh, to uh, refrain you know, from uh, uh, unilateral attempts to change the status quo uh, in, uh, in Asian uh, region. At the same time, you know, Japanese foreign policy is uh, uh, based on uh, atta attaching so much importance to us japan alliance. And uh, we have been uh, also promoting uh, free and open Indo-Pacific uh, vision, uh, which is based on openness, transparency, uh, and uh, shared uh, universal you know, values. So um, we wish to uh, support uh, a regional regime uh, in the context of uh, free and open in the Pacific, which will be beneficial for all the, the countries and the economies in the region. Now, uh, President Xi Jinping of China was supposed to visit uh, Japan this past spring, as I understand it, uh, but that has now uh, was postponed and, 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 and has not been rescheduled. Is, was that an, an indicative of a setback in um, in the relationship, or um, are we going to see such a visit, which was going to be was much anticipated? Will, will that be potentially uh, later this year? Uh, could we see it? Uh, uh, do you do you think we'll we'll see a rescheduling? Well, uh, yeah. The president Xi Jinping uh, uh, mm -hmm. So of course, you know, we we were. Uh, scheduling uh, to, to realize uh, President Xi Jinping's visit you know, to Japan uh, earlier this year, but because of the uh, COVID-19 yes. uh, situation, uh, the, the, our situation doesn't really allow uh, us uh, to, to host uh, President Xi Jinping uh, in Japan. And uh, at this point of time, we do not know uh, when uh, uh, we could uh, host President Xi. And, um, uh, at this point of time, you know, we we are not at the kind of a specific you know planning stage, uh, but but at the same time, as I mentioned, uh, Japan and China uh, 
uh, have uh, close uh, economic ties. And before you know, COVID-19, we have been receiving uh, so many uh, Chinese tourists you know, coming to Japan. So hopefully <clears throat> after you know, COVID-19 situation you know, comes down, uh, we will be able to restart you know, some of um, uh, the engagements. And uh, uh, we, we are uh, the neighbors you know, that, uh, uh, that need to get along. So, so uh, uh, basically our, our view is that you know, we would continue uh, to engage uh, with each other. Now, I mentioned the, um, the financing of the shift of some production out of China, which again, uh -huh, yeah. sort of harkens to this idea that there's some kind of decoupling going on um, mm -hmm. between uh, the United States and China and between maybe other uh, economies aligned with the United States and China. Right. Uh, how, how should we see this, um, uh, you know, this policy uh, from Tokyo in terms of uh, production in China? Uh, actually, you know, th this uh, uh, policy measure uh, is uh, uh, in order to address, you know, some of the uh, uh, supply of uh, uh, kind of essential goods uh, under emergencies, uh, such as uh, medical, you know, equipment or masks <clears throat> and so forth. So basically, you know, what we found out after, after you know, uh, the spread of COVID-19 is that uh, many of essential products are now outsourced and are not made in Japan. So uh, the, the policy measure is intended to secure uh, some essential production uh, inside Japan, but, uh, but also um, diversity of uh, suppliers, uh, you know, which could be overseas, uh, could also be you know, conducive you know, to uh, securing you know, some of the essential uh, products under emergencies. Now, um, if um, Abe-san had uh, been able to stay on uh, longer till the end of this year, another feather in his, his cap might have been the RCEP, the Regional mm -hmm. Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Uh, there is a recent meeting um, that mm -hmm. apparently some progress has been made. I'm wondering if you could uh, sort of give us an update on where that is. And I know that one of the key um, statements, uh, one, of the, one of the key um, items in the, the ministerial statement was that the door is still open for India um, mm -hmm. to, to, come, sure. to come back in. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, wh wh where are we with RCEP and will <laughs> it indeed be concluded finally at the end of this year, you think? Right. So, uh, uh, as you mentioned, you know, RCEP is a pillar of uh, East Asian economic uh, integration, uh, aiming at realizing the establishment of uh, uh, integrated economic zone, which covers about half of the world population and about 30% of the world's uh, GDP, as well as uh, total trade. So, um, uh, we, uh, among uh, RCEP, uh, participating countries, we are aiming to sign the agreement uh, by the end of this year. And uh, uh, as you mentioned, India has not uh, been participating in the recent uh, negotiation uh, sessions, but uh, we wish to keep uh, the door open for India to come back. Uh, so so uh, uh, th this is our intention. It's uh, kind of un unfortunate, you know, that uh, uh, India uh, may not uh, be uh, the initial, you know, finding, founding member of uh, RCEP, but uh, uh, we, we would uh, keep on uh, engaging uh, our Indian friends uh, uh, to, to come on board uh, sooner or later. What uh, remains to be done is there, it, it, because it seemed that they were um, the RCEP countries were already pretty much poised to conclude an agreement. And then uh, last year when India uh, withdrew, that that was what put the spanner in the works. Mm -hmm. Now, having India not at the table, um, that it would seem that the, um, uh, the going is now rather more smooth, rather smoother. Uh, is, um, is, is that a good way to look at it? 
Yeah. Well, uh, I would say that uh, uh, as uh, ministers have uh, conducted negotiations, you know, we have made major progress. So uh, uh, we we are uh, definitive in terms of uh, targeting at the conclusion of a negotiation uh, by the end of this year, and that would be a, a good news, you know, for uh, East Asian economies. Uh, you know, while when we are facing major challenges created by COVID-19. Do you foresee a, a time in the future where you could have a CPTPP or a TPP that includes the United States and China, and you could have RCEP, which might include the United States? Is that something that um, uh, could happen? It's kind of you know hard to say. Uh, yeah. well, of course, uh, TPP uh, has uh, uh, high standard uh, provisions, and uh, in order for uh, other uh, non-member to have accession to uh, TPP or CPTPP, uh, the the countries and the economies you know need, need to be prepared. So. Uh, uh, it's basically, you know, up to uh, uh, those countries, you know, that apply uh, for uh, the membership, and, and also they need to conduct uh, negotiation with existing members. So uh, I would not, you know, dare to predict, uh, you know, predict what will happen during the next uh, several years to come. Possibly the building block for the. The FTAP, the, FTAP. the, the big yes. mother, the the, the 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 big goal, the the, the goal no. that, that, that everyone wants. But I suppose uh, you know the point you're making um, is that RCEP is a really not at the same level a kind of agreement as the CPTPP. They're, yeah, they're really example, two different types of agreements. Yeah. Yeah. So so for example, you know, digital chapter of RCEP. May may not be equivalent, you know, to uh, TPP uh, or uh, U.S. Japan digital uh, agreements. Yes. By the way, we are negotiating uh, uh, economic partnership uh, agreement with uh, the U.K. and uh, we are hoping to conclude uh, uh, the negotiation very soon, uh, if uh, situation permits. Uh, but but uh, between Japan and the U.K. We, we can agree upon uh, among the highest standards uh, provisions on such issues as uh, digital. Uh, now, th does Brexit create a complication for that um, that process? So, so we are uh, negotiating with the British government, you know, because of Bre uh, Brexit, <clears throat> and uh, uh, the UK's uh, transition period uh, in terms of exit from the EU will end by the end of this year. So uh, we are aiming at uh, uh, having a, a new kind of FTA between Japan and the UK, which could, which, uh, could enter into force uh, from the beginning of next year. But uh, at this juncture, uh, we, we are kind of coming very close uh, to a deadline of uh, our negotiation, you know, kind of, kind of time limit, you know, because uh, as democracies, you know, uh, Japan has uh, democratic uh, proceedings uh, to go through. Uh, yes. And uh, so, so that uh, is a kind of limiting factor in terms of uh, the, uh, the timing of uh, the entry into force of the agreement. Politics intervenes, as it were, <laughs> in, in that respect. Now, uh, if I can just, uh, you know, close by asking you a, a more personal question. You, you just spent 10 months uh, before coming back to Tokyo. You mm -hmm. spent 10 months in the United States. Uh, you were uh, an associate at the uh, U.S.-Japan uh, program at the Weatherhead Center at Harvard University, where when I was a student, I spent a lot of time there. Um, so you're very familiar with the U.S. You did an AFS exchange in Diamond, Missouri uh, in the 80s. Uh, in Diamond, Missouri, I looked it up. It's in the southwest corner of the state, yes, sort of down yes. towards Arkansas. So it yeah, is exactly. uh, right exactly. near Joplin, right? So, mm -hmm. so, yes, you're, yes. Yeah, so, so it's, it's not really a very um, populous part of uh, yeah, Missouri. The countryside. And, yes. and certainly back then, it must have been even more, more rural. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, 
tell us a bit about you know the the, the most recent ten months you've spent in the U.S. Uh, and on fellowship interacting with students, but also given your long um, uh, experience in the United States, any of thoughts about you know the United States, the situation it's in, uh, what what did you learn, what impressions did you get from that period? Uh, well, my uh, the research uh, topic was uh, uh, emerging U.S. trade trade policy to China, but at the same time, I. I decided to visit the different universities across the United States, uh, including uh, in the Midwest, such as you know Ohio or Indiana, or to the south, you know, like yes. North Carolina. And um, I, I wanted to experience a diversity of uh, the U.S. society today. And and of course, you know, this has much to do with the uh, uh, emerging U.S. trade policy. Um, you know, like is uh, TPP a very popular political, you know, agenda item or not? So, so uh, uh, what what kind of impacts uh, does uh, uh, do FTAs have upon uh, American, you know, like regional uh, communities? Yes. So, so uh, those are the kind of interrelated issues, you know, that I was interested in. So I decided. Uh, to uh, visit different different parts of uh, the United States uh, beyond Boston. What, what did you very interesting. But what did you discover? Did you discover uh, that that people were upset about TPP or trade trade agreements in general, or did you find that they were more that the um, maybe the, uh, that the opposition to these uh, kinds of agreements and the globalization in, is, is maybe not as uh, as strong as we might think, yeah. particularly in that I part of the United it, States. Yeah, so it, it depends on, you know, where uh, you go. And uh, uh, there are a number of uh, American communities that benefit from uh, Japanese investments in the United States. Uh, and uh, there are major uh, Japanese, for example, auto investments uh, in such states as uh, uh, not only Michigan, but Ohio, South Kentucky, Carolina, I think, uh, South, Tennessee, ten, yes, Tennessee uh, among yeah. others. Yeah. So, so uh, 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 Japan, Japanese companies started to relocate uh, from Japan to the United States uh, starting, I guess, in the 70s. And uh, by now, uh, ma many Japanese companies are producing their automobiles in the United States rather than exporting from Japan. Of course, you know, there are investments in Mexico and Canada that, and those cars are exported you know, to uh, the United States uh, making use of uh, NAFTA or now you know, USMCA. Yes. So, FTA uh, arrangements uh, have uh, uh, significant impacts on uh, corporate you know, behavior, including investments uh, or export and imports. So, uh, uh, so I find you know, it, it depends on the, the different regions in the United States and uh, uh, I, I was struck, you know, by uh, this uh, diversity uh, in the United States. And, and uh, there, there are some political issues being generated, you know, because of uh, uh, the, the challenges, you know, being generated, you know, by globalization. And I, I suppose the pandemic, did, did, you, did you discern any negativity towards China, any significant negativity? Sure, you know, like, so, uh, of course, uh, I was in, in the United States until uh, mid-May, so yes. uh, I have uh, found, you know, uh, the messages, you know, coming from uh, uh, the Trump administration uh, and uh, the kind of concerns, you know, about uh, uh, lack of transparency, uh, especially at the beginning of uh, uh, the spreading of uh, COVID-19, especially in uh, uh, Wuhan or uh, Hubei. Yeah. So, so those are, uh, th th there are some, you know, uh, genuine concerns, you know, that were expressed politically. So, lastly, did you have a chance to go to Diamond, Missouri? 
Uh, I actually, I wanted to go, but uh, uh, toward the end of my uh, stay in the United States this, uh, this time, but uh, I needed to give up, you know, because uh, uh, of uh, COVID-19. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I suppose because reunions are, 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 are in the spring, so I suppose yeah. maybe they didn't have the <laughs> high school reunions. Yeah. Anyway, um, Shikata-san, thank you very much. This has been uh, lovely. Thank you for your time you and much. generosity and for sharing your insights. Um, we are very grateful and uh, thank you very much.